What, you want some more? Yes, please. Okay. Um, here is some more, some more speech. Some more speech that includes all sorts of words like nouns and adjectives. And Albuquerque. And, and adverbs. All right, that'll do. Oh, so you want me to quickly wrap up then? Yes. Mm. Cullen had a problem and a microphone to spare. Thomas took it up and so the podcast went to air. For weeks and months they trolled through every single DVD. They've unwrapped all the ones they can and now they're cellulose free. Now they're cellulose free. Hello, dear listener, and welcome to Cellulose Free. My name is Colin, and with me, as always, is my fellow film watcher, compadre and son, Thomas. Hi, hello. What have you been up to? Uh, Approximately six-sevenths as much as the last time you asked me. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So, not much? No. Not much that I can really say anything meaningful about, no. I'm continuing to plug away at various things that may or may not produce output at some point. (laughs) And I still have absolutely no idea what he's up to, so your guess is as good as mine. In fact, it's probably better because I lack imagination. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Or something. And you don't read my Twitter, where I've made more pointed hints. Oh, really? Okay, no, I departed Twitter in a huff. No, fair Many enough. Many ago. Yeah. And I admit that I do still have an account open, mainly because it's far easier if someone links to a Twitter comment. It's just easier. But I don't hang around Twitter no. anymore. Fair enough. I thread mm. and I Facebook mm. and I TikTok. And I, oh, okay, I don't TikTok. Um. <laughs> yeah, and how are those all working out for yeah, you? Yeah, they're not. No. No, threads are all right. Mastodon is pretty good. Yeah. Sort of more the, the arty side of things that I like to be amongst, so. Mm. Huh. Uh, the Tasmanian Parliament sat for the first time today. They did. Michelle O'Byrne of Labour was elected Speaker, which will cut Labour's vote count Indeed. On, on most votes, but also takes a very important role away from the government. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's an interesting move. I think the Liberals are feeling like we can't afford to give up any votes, so Mm. we shall make a sacrifice here. It's interesting because the default stance that a government speaker is supposed to take by tradition is that if they are required to vote, which they would be if the rest of the House tied, they either must allow debate to continue... So on a second reading, they'll push that through or maintain the status quo. So on a third reading, they wouldn't push it through. Right. But sort of falls away when you have a one seat majority, in which case all votes are assumed to be tied because that one seat is belonging to the speaker. Yeah. And no idea what it means for a non-government speaker. Oh, no. Yeah. And... Christy Johnston and David O'Byrne are sitting about as far apart as they can be on the crossbench. So I guess she got what she wanted. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. See that spot there? Yeah. (laughs) I want to be further away than that. Yeah. (laughs) But nothing exciting really happened. The first Tuesday of a parliament is sort of all ceremony and electing a speaker. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Things will probably kick off tomorrow. Yeah. Speaking of things kicking off tomorrow, that's part of why I don't really have anything to talk about, because there's a public meeting that at least I'm going to be at tomorrow. Yeah, I think I've almost twisted my arm Mm. to pull up my big boy pants and make my presence felt. All about the AFL slash AFLW High Performance Centre, which is slated to be built here in Clarence. In a questionable spot. Mm. And so I won't be here to record tomorrow, which is why we're recording now on a Tuesday. You will be completely oblivious to this, however, because it'll still come out when it normally comes out. Yeah, 
So we're going to have to make some allowances as far as guesses for last week's episode, just in case there's some stragglers. I did warn them they'd need to be early. Yeah, but they may not have listened to that well, yet. Well, yes. <laughs> It's all well and good giving the warning. Um, so basically, if anyone guesses it before this podcast comes out, you get the... the I can never remember what you've arbitrary called it. Arbitrary point. The arbitrary point. Anyway, that's later on. Mm. Have you been up to anything? Not really. I mean, I've been up to what most of the world has been up to and going ooh and ah at the strange goings-ons in the skies above as mm. the sun splatters particles through our atmosphere. <laughs> the one part of it that I saw was not particularly impressive and my feet were cold, so I went back inside. <laughs> and then later on, it got very impressive and you missed mm. it out. Yeah. So, well, you didn't miss out because every man and his dog has taken photos and mm. posted them absolutely everywhere. So that was fun. It was well worth getting out. It certainly caused havoc in certain areas where everyone thought, oh, that would be the best place to watch this traffic chaos. And then there was suggestion that the next night it may well be visible again. And so lots of people raced off to various places and it was but no, no, a non-event. No. The geomagnetic storm was just about over. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that's, yeah. That's pretty much all I've been up to. So we might as well just move on. And we have a movie to watch. That we do. We are watching a buffalo, ten long slender fish, and a male human. I do not get this reference. Bison, ten right. eel, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. A buffalo, ten long slender fish, and a male human. That fell flat, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Howls of derisive laughter. Good. Mm -hmm. Thomas, would you tell our dear listener what Bicentennial Man is all about, according to the back of the DVD case? Well, as I said last week, and in as many words, Bicentennial Man is the hilarious and heartwarming story of one robot's extraordinary 200-year journey to become an ordinary man. This is the thing that I am still curious about as to the hilariousness of it. And upon grabbing the case, I don't think I recall registering that this is a Chris Columbus film. He of the first two Harry Potter movies, Home Alone, lots of kid type movies he's famous for. In fairness, it is also a Wolfgang Peterson Gail Katz, Lawrence Mark, Neil Miller, Mark Radcliffe, and Michael Barnathan film. Right. It is yet to be seen as to its hilariousness. Thomas is going to open the case. He's going to take the disc out of its case. He's going to slot it into our DVD Blu-ray player. We're going to watch it, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. So we shall catch you on the flip side. Turn to side B. Got nothing. No. No. Mm. I was Not, trying to think of something, but no. Yeah, no, I don't even have a mongrel for you. No. You mongrel. So, what did you think? I quite enjoyed that, actually. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I had a good time. Was it hilarious? It was... <laughs> it's funny in places. <laughs> yeah. It's funny in places, but I still... Would not class it as a, an hilarious film. Mm. It's got more breadth than that. Yes. And I think that write-up was very much playing on the, oh, it's Robin Williams, so it is mm -hmm. going to be hilarious. But uh, no, there, there was a lot more to it than that. Yeah. A lot of length to it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like it could do with, like, another, a couple of sequences cut out of it, but I'm not sure which. Yeah. Mm. It, yes. The, the pacing was a little all over the show, really, and, yeah, it, it, it did need a trim, I think. It spends a lot of time in the early years before skimming through the rest at quite a pace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I don't know whether it's... Uh, my brain is not functioning terribly well at the moment. Mm. But the whole ageing sequence of people 
just seemed slightly off in places. Mm -hmm. Like the two sisters, as far as the younger sister, she suddenly appeared older than the older sister and well and truly grown up. And yet the mother is threatening the daughter with grounding or... Uh, Yes, it it did feel a bit weird. It's not a perfect film by any means. No, no. So all through the film, there were certain people who, even though they would pop up how many years have passed... The ageing didn't seem to match that in a lot of places. Some of that can be explained away with progress. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Did you get a Dobby vibe where (laughs) he was very much a house elf? Yeah. And then he got his clothes and so he got his freedom. And There, There is a bit of house elf in there, yeah. Mind you, chickens and eggs, this came first. Mm. I think... Oh, Ooh, it'll be close, I think. Yeah. So the film was 2001 for Philosopher's Stone, and the novel was 97. But Dobby doesn't appear until the second book. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> Do I want to look more into this? I don't know. No. No, I don't want to give Rowling more airtime is the thing. That's true. All right. No. (laughs) Do your own research. Yeah. (laughs) But it really, really gave me that vibe Mm -hmm. of getting given clothes and then suddenly not being the slave anymore, even though he was never really a slave in this. Or was. I don't know. Mm. (laughs) He was certainly building a lot of things. Yep. Um, The opening titles... Yeah. I really, really was incredibly impressed with those opening Mm. titles. It established so much and was very stylish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And in some regards, even outshone certain aspects of the film. Yep. Now, stylish, yes, but to some extent, style over function. It was a little difficult (laughs) to read some of those credits Uh in the time allotted at the speeds they were moving. (laughs) Yeah. Who reads titles anyway? Well, I don't necessarily always read the titles, but it's good to have the option there. (laughs) Mind you, I had to race out in the closing titles, which, as far as I could tell, were nowhere near as enthralling as the... They were pretty standard. Pretty bog standard, yeah. Acting was solid throughout. Yep. And my recollection, I have only seen this once before, and I think I saw it fairly soon after Mrs. Doubtfire, Mm -hmm. which was the previous pairing of both Chris Columbus and Robin Williams. Yep. And that film grated on me somewhat, and I think that possibly overflowed emotionally for me when I first watched this. Yep. This time around, not so much. I think I appreciate more Robin Williams's both the selection of him as an actor in this and his performance, except for those moments where he was just being Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. And, and it felt almost as if he would jump out of character to suddenly be Robin Williams. Mm. For example, that long list that, of jokes yes. to the family, that was all the Robin at Williams ad lib. Yep. And it was that sequence in particular where I felt that. So it's comforting to know that I wasn't the only one who noticed that. I've got no more notes. No. But you enjoyed it. Yeah. So that's a good recommendation for anyone to track it down if you can find it. It's probably available somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know here, as far as streaming goes, it's only currently on SBS On Demand. Yeah, so I noticed that. With, <laughs> we with could ads. have watched it with ads. So, yeah. Yeah, and been here half an hour later. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not be doing that. Mm. If you've got nothing else, we shall move on then. The following segment has no title. Thank you. And and before we get to the untitled segment, I actually realised that I forgot to bring up something uh, during our opening segment, which is that Doctor Who is back. You did forget to mention that. Mm. Mm. 
and it, it, <laughs> how have you been finding it? It's a bit of a shaky start for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was the same. I didn't think either of the stories were particularly strong. No, no. Um, um, I, I do like the pairing. Yes. The, the companionship is actually companionship. Mm. And I don't think I ever really felt that with the previous Doctor. Mm-hmm. With any of her companions, all of them seemed forced, but this does feel yes better. <laughs> there's there's a great deal of chemistry here, but it does come down to the writing, doesn't it? It does come and, down to the writing. Yeah. And like I I know that Russell can write. <laughs> Obviously, he can write. He wrote several series some years back, mm. um, and like most of the episodes in those series, but. Uh, <laughs> The first episode, the space babies bit, yeah, very grating to yeah. me. The the insistence on babies, space babies, space babies, just, they're space babies, very grating, and just builds up to a, a fart joke. What, what, yeah. What, yeah, what are we doing here? Um, oh. and and are, like, are we in spoiler territory here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And the devil's caught. I did. Largely enjoy it, but it sort of grinds to a halt at the end. Yeah. And the musical number... Uh, why... <laughs> what... <laughs> a musical number is generally supposed to serve some purpose. Yeah. And it it didn't. It, it seemed more like it was just padding. <laughs> oh, we, we are doing a musical episode and we have not had a musical number yet, somehow. <laughs> oh, well, I've already written all of this. The, the music is back. That's the only thing that I can think of, yeah. is that the world now has music again. Mm. So let's make a song and dance about it. And the world now has Murray Gold again. And other than that one musical number, I have... No particular complaints about the soundtrack so far, so... Yeah. My enthusiasm has been muted somewhat by these first two episodes, and we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah. <laughs> I heard somewhere that maybe The Devil's Chord had been brought forward because of Eurovision. Oh, um, okay. Which does make... <laughs> Eurovision vibe to it. Does make a small amount of sense and was broadcast, like, directly before Eurovision started mm -hmm. on Sunday? Saturday? Sunday? The day that it started. Yes. And I'm not going to go into Eurovision, because this year was a whole can of worms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been a number of years since my enthusiasm has been there for Eurovision. Yeah. Yeah, you I haven't actually I used watched to, to watch it uh, reasonably often, but yeah, I haven't actually watched Eurovision in a couple of years because this is a completely inconvenient time for me, which is surprising. Surprising that a thing that late in the day would be inconvenient yeah, for me. That's really strange. But um, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Comments. Comments. We do have some comments. There are some comments and. Some of them are from the last episode, and I missed them, even though I said that I'd done my rounds. Apparently, uh, I had not. Okay, so you had actually missed... They, they didn't... Yeah, I missed some tweets. <sighs> Dear listener, it's Thomas's fault. Yeah. Even yeah. though I am feeling guilt. Mm. <laughs> well, I am, uh... I'm feeling guilt. Working with Twitter with multiple accounts is... Painful at times, mm -hmm. particularly because specifically the High Hollow Productions account, very slow to load things. Really? Yeah. That's weird. It is weird. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, okay. Let's let's get our brains back into the Station Agent era. Yes. Okay. We have comments on Twitter from both M. Hi, M. And Angel. Hi, Angel. And to get it out of the way quickly, both Stat Agent and Tustaton Ag Agent uh, were wrong guesses. They were. Yes. They were good, but entirely incorrect. Mm. Yeah. As you would know, since you've yeah. probably listened to the previous episode Indeed. by now. <laughs> M says, 
at the post-credits scene, skimming through the episodes, the only one shorter than this is Hunt for the Wilder People at 21 minutes. Uh, ignoring Still Under Wraps, where Troll Hunter is still the undefeated shorter episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's Troll Hunter 1. Yes. 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 The Still Under Wraps episode on Troll Hunter. <laughs> yes. As opposed to the Cellulose Free the episode. The Deja Vu mm. episode of. Yes. And Angel says, I've been in comment purgatory for several weeks, and I have commented every week, but I think Twitter and YouTube last week have wrongly silenced my posts. Hopefully this goes through or I'll be very puzzled. Uh, it no, did go it, through. No, it didn't go through. No. <laughs> we it haven't did, seen it. <laughs> it did go through, but... No, I have checked, and I could not find any of the previous comments that you're referring to there, so... The, the fact they... that this one has come through means that uh, you're out of purgatory. Mm. Yeah, not not even the YouTube comment. You know, so, sometimes a comment will get stuck in the spam queue. I didn't find anything there, so... Hmm. Yeah. It is what it is. It is, but welcome back. Yes, on to comments from this week. Yes. Entu Osferatu. Hi, Entu Osferatu. Says, whoever hired Randy Newman <laughs> to score their action movie should have expected what they got. Indeed. I guess he has some action comedies, but emphasis on the comedy. Free Amigos? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, no, I do not know what they were thinking. Uh, when Colin said fish out of water with a particular set of skills, I immediately thought under siege. You got to. That is the only thing that you can think of. Which, with the addition of a comment on this episode from M. Hi, M. Uh, brings us up to the guesses. It does. M. Tosferatu mm -hmm. has gone for R. Careful with this. R. Fur Cone. A-R-F-R-C-O-N-E, mm -hmm. which is incorrect, it, it is. I'm sorry to say. Sorry. And M, who has made no further comment, but has made a guess, says Air Force One, A-I-R-F-R-C-E, and then the numeral one. Now, if I had been creating the file name for the file for Air Force One, mm -hmm. what I would probably go for is A I R F R C E one, mm. which happens to be what M guessed. Yes, and if I was the one who did it, which I was, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, which is to say, <laughs> the M, you get the arbitrary point. Yeah, and I remembered that it's called an arbitrary point. Even in my befuddled state. Well done. And thank you all for your uh, contributions. And thank you for your past contributions as well that Thomas completely missed. Yeah. Do you feel really bad now? No. Oh. Sadly, no. So I'm still feeling it. Mm. <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to uh, provide any contributions or make movie suggestions or take a... Wild swing at what eight or fewer character file name has been attached to this particular episode. You are welcome to do so by the usual methods, or even some unusual methods. <laughs> though I can't guarantee that those will work. Well, even the usual methods <laughs> well, don't seem yeah. to all the time. Ah, yeah. oh, well. Yes. And did you mention movie suggestions? Yes, yes I good. did. Okay. Sorry, I was uh, trying to get ahead of myself here and mm -hmm. be ready for the next exciting segment, which occurs now. Pick a film for next week so we can go to bed. It's your turn. It is my turn. And I have chosen a film. And it's almost half an hour longer than today's little effort. Oh, right. So so last week when you were complaining yes, about the I know. length of this. <laughs> yeah, but it did feel long, didn't it? It did, just okay. a little. Now, I have recollections that this one feels long too. But Great. <laughs> but, but, but there's a bit of a theme happening here. Yeah. Okay, and I'm following on from today's theme. I have selected a Steven Spielberg film. Right. That I believe you have not seen. 
I mean, that's that's plausible. <laughs> it is. He, he has made a lot of films. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to read the plot synopsis here. Uh-huh. After skipping some of the rubbish. Okay. When a prototype robot child named David, played by Haley Joel Osment, is programmed to love his human family, isn't... Pr- oh, good grief. This is, this is awful. Hang on. Preempt. Okay, I'm going to try and find... If it's any consolation, mm. I do know the film that you're talking uh, you're, about. You're buzzing in, are you? Um, isn't it just called David? No. No? It is no. not just called David. No. No. Well, then I can't remember the title of the film, but I do know which one you're talking about. Okay. Let's try this plot synopsis. What? <laughs> In the not-so-far future, the polar ice caps have melted and the resulting rays of the ocean waters has drowned all the coastal cities of the world. Withdrawn to the interior of the continents, the human race keeps advancing, reaching to the point of creating realistic robots called mechas to serve him. One of the mecha-producing companies builds David, an artificial kid, which is the first to have real feelings especially a never-ending love for his mother, in quotes, Monica. I'm I'm not going to keep reading this. We're watching AI, Artificial Intelligence. I'm probably getting my wires crossed with a different film. You probably are. Yeah. We're watching AI, Artificial Intelligence, which was conjured up by Stanley Kubrick and a couple of screenwriters and then Steven Spielberg was asked to direct and then Stanley Kubrick died and yeah it all got a bit muddled and kefuddled Mm. but that is what we're watching next week more robots Mm. (laughs) so we hope that you can join us when we watch more robots (laughs) but until then we'll catch you next time bye you have been listening to cellulose free your hosts were colin who produces and edits the show and thomas who makes the artwork and music Cellulose Free is recorded in the Deranged Cat Studios in scenic Tasmania, Australia. We keep track of our extensive physical media collection through My Movies, which we highly recommend. You can find links to that, as well as other places you can find us in the show notes. Cellulose Free is a Hi Hello production. lesser known sequels uh, yet more robots and oh no is it robots again (laughs) (laughs) for pity's sake stop the robots and stop this podcast where's the stop button